Time to stay strong, need to move on to be what I want. I'll keep dreaming on. And time to stay strong, need to move on to be what I want. I'll keep dreaming on. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a ride or die for my dreams on tap, I'm a fly real high, you ain't see me slack, I'm a snide, how you fall, it's how you get right back up, this how you get tough, calluses on my hands so rough, yeah, I call your bluff, I'm not the one, mess with me, come out with none, cause I'm so done, you had your fun. Hey, it's Joe Farrell Geek Toolkit, and this is a very exciting video for me. This is the announcement of Dynaframe Pro. I've been working on Dynaframe for about two years now. I made the first and second versions and released them. They've been released out on GitHub, they're open source, and the community's been really great. Gotten thousands of downloads and tens of thousands of video views and a lot of feedback from the community. It was time to make something new, something next generation, and address a lot of the feedback and the asks of the community. This is Dynaframe Pro running behind me. And this is a gesture showing that it actually has gesture support built in. The other thing to notice is that these are right here are not only just pictures, but actually videos. So if you're not familiar with Dynaframe, it supports pictures and videos as well. Now, not only does it do gesture support, we also have a web app support. So you can use basically anything with a browser, a phone, tablet, PC, Mac, whatever. And you can take control of it locally. No cloud, no app download. The nice thing about that is your content can be stored locally too. So that way none of your personal family photos go out to the cloud you have full control of all of them. Also means you don't have to upload a bunch of stuff to use it. Basically put it on the frame and you go. There's a couple other things I want to talk about in case you are not familiar with Dynaframe before we jump into the new features of Pro and all of this stuff I've addressed. And then at the end of this, I'll tell you how to get it. I have a playlist feature, which is basically folders that you upload your pictures and uh, videos to. What that allows you to do is select what you want to uh, show at any given time. Maybe you want to show science fiction pictures. Maybe you want to show family pictures. Uh, maybe you want to show both. You can mix and match any of the things I talk about in this video together based on how you want to set stuff up. Now, the other big feature is it supports not only horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, horizontal, but vertical as well. So this one here is also a Dynaframe. This is just set up to be paused on a static image, but it just shows that you can do horizontal and vertical. Now, these are just televisions with Raspberry Pis on the back of them. That's all it takes to run this. Now let me talk about some of the things I've done with Dynaframe Pro. One of them is I have made this a image-based install. This was all about the concept to make everything easier. There's a lot of stuff I did to make it easier based on the feedback of what people were telling me and the support I was doing. I realized that I had to come up with something that didn't require knowing Linux uh, administration to use, but also that would be friendly in case you did want to use it. So, the way I'm doing this is there's an image you'll download. You put that on your Raspberry Pi and you're up and running. That's it. No more command lines, no more hooking up a keyboard and mouse. It just boots and it's ready to go. If you have an ethernet cable, you're done. If you don't, then you have to connect it to Wi-Fi. Well, you can do that with no keyboard and mouse too. You just take a, something that has Wi-Fi like a phone or tablet. You'll connect to a website on the device. And then, oh, I love this one. Um, and then you'll be able to basically tell the device to connect to your local home network. Again, nothing goes to the cloud, it's all local and it gets up and running. With that ease of use, there were a couple other things I wanted to address. There is now an instruction section in the web application. What this allows you to do is immediately be able to get help, not only in the web application for how to do things, but also how to use it. And then each of the settings has help, basically a tooltip in the web app now to tell you how to use the setting. Again, a lot of work went into making this as easy as possible. Now I want to show you one more thing that I thought was kind of magical that just kind of helps make this uh, just that much cooler. I had to find my phone. Now on my phone, I'm going to just bring up my camera. And what I'm going to do here is I have a gesture sensor down here. If I swipe the gesture sensor, it has a QR code, which is this little code here. If I scan that code and open it, 
then I immediately have the website up on my phone. That means that to take control of this, I don't have to know the IP address anymore or type it in. I can just scan it with my camera and bring it up using the gesture bar. Now I can also pause to take control of this if I want to freeze it. I can swipe up to unpause it and get all of my debug information if I need it. If I want to hide this, I can just swipe down and that goes away. The second thing I focused on was making it so that your content could go onto the frame easy and it was your content the way you were comfortable with putting it on there. I'll talk about all the different ways to do this now with Dynaframe Pro. Because it's an image-based install, it has a network share built into it now that you can use to copy stuff to it. The nice thing about that network share is that on a Windows or a Mac device, it's very, very easy to send a bunch of content over folders and all that to get it over there quickly, easily, and be done. Another way to do it is you can put it on a thumb drive now with uh, your folders and so on, if you have a device that's not on the network or whatever, and you can plug that in and that will show up. Now again, you can mix and match, you can do both and you can use, show pictures from either or. The other thing you can do is you can actually upload directly from your phone now. So the web app, or I'm sorry, any web app, anything with a web browser, you can do, upload from the web browser and you can create playlist folders. So you can create a playlist folder, go through your phone, upload a bunch of photos and send it, which makes it very easy. I made it as fast as possible because you're connecting directly from your phone to your frame. If you have a good network connection there, you're gonna have a very quick, uh, basically transfer between the two. If you're an advanced user, you can still use things like connect it up to a NAS drive or our clone to connect it up to cloud services. So if you wanna connect up to like OneDrive, Google Drive, uh, Dropbox or any of that cloud, service stuff, you want to connect to an FTP server, HTTP, you can use our clone, set that up and download. And again, you can mix and match folders and connect it. Now, because of the way this is set up, you can image any uh, SD card you want, as big as you want. Or if you want to put those folders and send them over to a thumb drive, you can do all of that. Again, mix and match as you will. So you have plenty of storage and it's very expandable. You can even plug in an SSD and add that if you want. So lots of flexibility there, lots of different ways to do it. Now there's one other thing I added for Dynaframe Pro that looking forward here. I added a store concept. The store concept takes a code and what happens is you put in the code, it will take something off of the website that, I'm set, that I've got running right now and it will download it and install it and set it up for you. Now I'm gonna set up a bunch of free packs. What this will allow you to do is very easily get a bunch of cool artwork. People ask me a lot for, for the artwork that I have. Now, this artwork here, a lot of this is from sites. This is personal stuff that I've downloaded off of DeviantArt, basically like a, my desktop background stuff that I put on my frames. I can't distribute to this. But what I do plan on doing is going to these artists and asking them to license the artwork and then being able to bring that artwork onto the store and then download it. Now we'll have to be very careful to make sure we do everything right. But the whole goal here is that the artists get credit and that they get compensated for their work and it gives them an outlet for making more money for selling their work to users who want to actually have it up on their frame. So I'm trying to set up that marketplace, but also for those that just want to share their photography and their artwork, we can set up those packs too for free. And again, I'm going to be setting up a bunch so that you have some stuff to get going. The next thing I want to talk about is style improvements. The web UI has been rewritten from the ground up using a technology called Ajax. What this means to you is when you turn basically your playlists on and off, it's instant, they'll show up immediately. You don't have to do this weird refresh thing. You don't see the website flickering when you do stuff. You can do things like turn the frame on and off and it's almost like having a remote control. So the website uh, is now just a much nicer rewritten website. The other thing about the website is it is Ajax based and themable. So I can switch themes to an entirely different looking website and I have a sample one in there to kind of show this. I did a sci-fi version of a website to give it a theme, to give you a different user experience. But not only does it theme the website, it also themes the background images and the startup logos and everything. So it just kind of shows that you can really make this look how you want. Now, if you're a commercial uh, person looking to have a commercial version of this, I do have the ability to license this now. And that is useful for you because then you can theme it for your commercial use. So if you're a distributor, and you want to uh, sell frames, then this software will be available for you and we'll be able to put your logo and everything into it. Now, user requests are another thing I've done a lot of work on. Uh, things like blur boxing. So if you have images that don't fill up the entire frame, I had done scaling in Dynaframe 2, 
We now blur uh, whatever doesn't fill up the frame so that it just looks nice. Whatever artwork you put up there will look good. That's called blur boxing. I've also added that feature. A lot of people have asked me for being able to play back the full video versus basically I was cutting videos off at the transition time. So I said, if you wanted to show images for 30 seconds and you put a five minute video in there, it would play 30 seconds and switch to be consistent with the images. That's now a setting you can turn on and off. You can turn it off and have it play the full five minute video. So that is in there as well. Another thing that people have been asking me for is more video file formats. I have now moved over to VLC. Uh, VLC gives us more formats uh, right off the bat and I will continue to add more. The one format that's not in yet that is coming, I, I basically just had a, a preview going today and I've got some debugging to do, but it will be coming soon. It's animated uh, GIF, GIF, I don't know, animated GIFs. Anyway, they're coming, uh, not this month though. They'll probably be in the March or April release, but they are coming, I am working on them. I got initial work going today, so we'll see how that goes. Finally, the last geeky thing before we get into how to get this is performance and debugging. I'm working with Quicksilver, he's been doing a ton of uh, work with me and not only testing and quality and helping make decisions and designing, but also he did an amazing performance fix to really get the transitions to just be buttery, buttery smooth and cut way down on memory usage. The other thing for the super geeky people out there that want to do debugging or uh, see the logs of what's going on, maybe you want to know what your playlist order is or you want to know what settings you have, any kind of debugging or logging like that, or if you just hit an issue and you're trying to figure out what's going on, you want to help get me the logs and get help, all of that has been revamped. It's much, much more powerful. You don't have to grab it and get and go into Linux. You can grab it right off the web UI now. So I've made that just a whole experience much, much better to help you and to help me so that we can continue to move this project forward at a quick pace. Thank you so much for your support and for your interest in the software. I'm gonna talk about how to get it now. I'm releasing this behind a Patreon that's $5 a month. The software download will come with that Patreon subscription and you only have to subscribe for one month. You'll get a build of the software, it will work forever, there won't be an expiration on it. If you wanna cancel, then you have it for five bucks. But if you continue to support me, I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna do for my members to help provide value for that money and what I'm gonna do with that money to help provide value for the frames. The main thing I'm gonna do is tutorials for advanced topics for things like home automation integrations. And I'll also talk about things like setting up cloud uh, integrations with Arc Loan, stuff like that. I'll talk about some advanced scenarios such as development and actually uh, debugging scenarios, and as well as how to use the API to build out your own scenarios. The other thing is my plan is to release every month a new build, and so the patrons will see the previews of what features are coming and they'll be able to influence those features, of course, as well. As those features and bug fixes come in and I release new builds each month, the Patreons for that month will receive those builds. The other thing is I'm gonna use the money to help support the infrastructure that I've built out now for things like the website and the web store, and also to help with getting artists on board for providing their artwork and being able to compensate them appropriately. The ideal goal for me would be to build out a really nice art store so it's very easy and inexpensive for people to download artwork onto their frames and have it just very simply there. Very cool art packs. And I wanna get stuff that's motion-based and designed for the frames as well. The other thing this will do is help me research some advanced hardware as I work on things. Right now I have a motion sensor, but there's some ideas and concepts around a PIR sensor to do things like have the frames turn on and off at night. I'll do tutorials on how to do the electronics of the frame right now for the motion sensor, very simple. I'll show that in my initial setup video. But for doing things like PIR or adding your own sensors or if you wanna have physical buttons, I can show that as well and we can work on the features together to make the, those uh, experiences basically come to life. I'm gonna be looking at my Patreons for the influence and the inspiration of where they wanna take this. While I do have my own ideas that are pretty out there that I look forward to showing off in the next few months as well. Again, I want to thank you for your support. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you have any feedback also, please put that down there. And if you look in the description, I'll have links to the Patreon and I'll update the description with any other information that you need to know. Thank you for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit and welcome to Dynaframe Pro.
I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating I'm feeding this demon Got a taste, can't erase bitterness in my face Work a job every day till your dreams fade away Like a card never changed